Grace and peace multiplied to everybody in the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Most High God, the Savior to those that keep His commandments. I hope everybody had a good day today, and uh, thank God for allowing us to be blessed, to wake up and see another day, to do His will. As long as we do His will, as long as we do the Lord's will, everything will be okay. He will continue to bless us and hopefully we can get into the kingdom. See, the Bible says the righteous, even the righteous, scarcely make it in to his kingdom. So that means we got a lot of work to do. <laughs> but this is something I just want to touch on called deliverance 2016. Because the Lord will deliver you out of your troubles as long as you obey him. And the Bible tells you, the book tells you, we have not been obedient servants. Not just now, but all the way back to the days of old. In the beginning, we have not been obedient to the Lord. And a lot of people, these uh, so-called holy men and women, women of God want to say, well, we got to take the fear, out of, the fear of the Lord out of the Bible and, and replace it with love. Well, the love of God is keeping his commandments. Matter of fact, let me read that. You know, 1 John chapter 5, one verse here. First John chapter 5, and verse 3. For this is the love of God. What's the love of God? He's about to tell you. That we keep his commandments. Whoa. <laughs> so, the love of God is to keep God's commandments? Not to do whatever else that's contrary to the commandments? That's the opposite of the commandments? The love of God is to keep his commandments. And I'm going to finish it. It says, and his commandments are not grievous. That means God's commandments are not hard to keep. And you got some false prophets out there saying, oh, you can't keep all those laws. Yes, you can. It was shown to us by the prophets. And it was shown to us by Jesus and the apostles as examples that it's easy to keep. Might be a hard time dealing with the world because they don't want to hear the truth. And it's tripped out how, how 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 people in the world, the world, they want to they don't want to hear the truth. When it comes to this Bible, they don't want to hear the truth. But they don't want to be lied to. <laughs> Hypocrites. But anyway, John chapter 14, verse 15, Jesus say, <laughs> He say, if you if you love me, keep my commandments. It's simple. But um, I'm going to show you something else Jesus said. And I know I read it before in prior lessons. But this is just a precursor because I'm going I'm to get down and dirty um, in future times. Lord's will. Because I, I, I'm going to bring it to you raw. I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. Playtime is over. You know, got these so-called men and women of God playing church. You know, they don't even know that the first original church started all the way back in the days of, of, of Moses and them. Not in Acts, the book of Acts. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, Luke chapter 4. And this is Jesus quoting the book of Isaiah. He's quoting Isaiah 61. We're going to go there too, but I'm going to show you what I, what I was talking about. Luke chapter 4. This is after he was tempted by the devil. Verse 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Did it say Sunday? Did it say the first day of the week? 
No, it didn't. It said the Sabbath day, and we all know that is the seventh day of the week. How many days have you got in the week? Seven. What is the middle of the week? Wednesday. So, as my wise teacher will say, here's your here's learning something on your way to learn something. The middle of the week is Wednesday, right? When you read the prophecy of Daniel, where it tells you about the Messiah being cut off, being killed in the midst of the week, that means Wednesday. He didn't die on no good Friday. <laughs> what is the midst of the week? Wednesday. It's just that simple. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we got people want to twist things. And they leading congregations and thousands of people going following this false doctrine. <laughs> Hopefully the Lord can open their eyes and wake them up to his truth. Jesus tell you in John 17 verse, verse 9, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. He's, you know, and people people got this mis, mis, mixed con conception that Jesus loved everybody. That ain't what he said in the book. And he showed you many examples of that. So anyway, verse, uh, let me read that again. Verse 16, and he came to Nazareth where, his, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for it to read. Did he jump around and scream hallelujah and, you know, I got the Holy Ghost and, you know, <laughs> did he say, did he do all that? No. He read. And what we, we don't want to read. You see the, see, the, see the contrary? But anyway, verse 17, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Not the rich, the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. Now, who are the captives? Like I said before, he was not preaching to men in jail. <laughs> he was preaching to the people. But they are captives where they were and still today. Captives of their minds. Because they don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to open their mind. That's why the Lord say, I will put my laws into your hearts and in your minds will I write them. Not on the fringes, but in your, in your heart and in your mind. But the world don't want to follow the truth. They don't want it. <laughs> they know about it, but don't want to keep it. You know right from wrong. You know to, you know to obey God, but you don't want to do it. That's a shame. You want to come up with your own thing. But anyway, deliverance to the captives, that means, first of all, during this time, they was under the Roman control at that time. The Romans were in control. That's why Jesus tell you, give, give, give to Caesar what is Caesar and give to God what is God's. You know, and there's many examples like 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 Daniel, for instance, Daniel the prophet. They were in the land of Babylon. They were taken into captivity by Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. But you still had to obey God's laws. You know, <laughs> it's just that simple. Still got to obey God's laws no matter where you are. It's just that simple. But. Daniel was in physical captivity. Here it is thousands of years later. We in spiritual captivity. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. And I'm going to show you. I'm going I'm I'm to show you something about that uh, Lord's will in future days to come. Now, let's go to Isaiah 61 right quick. Isaiah, 6, Isaiah 61, verse 1 and 2. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the, the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Now, during Isaiah's time, you had the, uh, the captivity of Israel with the Assyrians, right? But one of the other 12 tribes 
Well, that was when the nine tribes went into captivity and slavery with the Assyrians. But the you had three tribes left, right? Benjamin, Judah, and Levi. Now they saw this happening. You think that they would learn from the examples of their brothers, you know, and obey God. But no, they didn't do that. They went and served all kind of paganism, did all everything contrary, broke all the commandments. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and the Lord, the Lord is merciful. He kept giving them chances, kept giving them chances over and over, but they would not listen like it is today. When are we going to wake up? Time is ticking. Time is ticking. Yeah. But see, that's the, that's the thing. We want to call on the Lord every time we get into trouble. Oh, why don't you call on the Lord on every time he bless you to wake up and see another day? That's a part of deliverance. You know? That is deliverance. Because... You know, you might not hear about it, but you know it. It's a lot of people did not wake up today. And not to say that the Lord is evil. The Lord is a fair and righteous and merciful God. <laughs> and he wants, matter of fact, he tell you in the book of Ezekiel, he don't want nobody to die. Physically or spiritually. But you see it today, you look around. We still die because of Adam. Listen to his wife. She knew the truth, but she still went and took the devil's advice anyway, right? And that's why we die today. <laughs> you know, it's time for us to wake up and listen. Listen to the truth, not tradition. But I'm going to tell you something. Many, many years, when I was a child, you know, like scripture say, when I was a child, I thought as a child. I was a child about six or seven years old, and um, I was celebrating this pagan holiday called the 4th of July or Independence Day that had nothing to do with my people or me. And uh, I had a crush on this girl that stayed across the street from my cousin, right? Her name was Laura. And we was running around on, you know, with fireworks and everything on the 4th of July. And, and, and Laura was chasing me. She was chasing me with a sparkle. Now, Laura's house sat on a hill. So I had quite a bit of distance running from her, right? You know, I got pretty far from her. But then I ran up that hill towards her house. I got to the top of the hill. I stopped. I got tired. Laura was still coming. And what happened? As soon as I turned my head, Laura stabbed me in the eye with that sparkle. You know, Lord deliver me from that. I could be blind to this day. I could have wore a patch over my eye the rest of my life. Lord could have took, took the eyeball out of my socket for the rest of my life. But he blind me. I still have 20-20 vision. Thank God in the name of Jesus Christ the Messiah for his deliverance. You know. And the Lord is delivering you. But he wants us to turn to him so he can continue to bless us and bless us more abundantly. But when we do things that are not in line with his word, we have to do some suffering. You know, even... Even after coming into knowledge, wisdom, and the truth, the Lord continues to bless me and deliver me. As well as he's delivering you, but he wants to do so much more. But people say, we waiting on the Lord. Yeah, but the Lord is waiting on us to do something. When you read the book of James, it tells you. Faith without works is dead. I can show you my faith by my works. <laughs> You know, so if the Lord wants you to do works, because you can't just call on his name. <laughs> That's not all you got to do. You got you got to call on his name. You got to keep the commandments. You got to get baptized. You got to walk in newness of life from this point on. 
and you got to study to show yourself approved so you can teach others or at least do your job and inform others or warn others because the Lord said, he tell you in the book, warn the people from me. Or he tell you, hey, don't fear them, don't fear them that can kill the body. Kill the one that, fear the one that can kill the body and raise